Hey there and welcome back to the channel. I've got some eight foot doors behind me here. These are the last two doors on this custom home that I have to install. And I wanted to make a video highlighting some of the tips and tricks that go into getting a really good, perfect hang on an eight foot pre-hung door. So stay with me here. We're gonna install these two doors. I'll show you some of the key things I do and look for to get a really good hang on a big, heavy eight foot door. Now there are some really important keys to success with eight foot door. First off, we need a lot of shim points and we need those shims in the correct location. As anyone know who has hung very many doors, cripple studs are not always running perpendicular to the plane of the door. And if you want a door that hangs perfectly and swings perfectly, the closer you can have your jam to perpendicular, the better. So that all starts with having your shims running perfectly perpendicular to the plane of the door. Now, using traditional tapered shims, that can be hard to do. So in this install, I'll be using the Jam Master. That's my go-to for door hanging. Uh, let me show you how that kind of works. Typically, I'm hanging six foot eight doors with the Jam Master and that's usually how I have it set up. But you can also set up the Jam Master for eight foot doors and it's very simple to do that. There's an extension right here on top and I'm just gonna loosen these two screws to show you this extension pops right out. So if you wanna use the Jam Master for eight foot doors, it's pretty simple. You're just gonna add those two extensions on both sides, tighten up the screws and you're good to go uh, for eight foot doors. Now I run my spreader bar, um, as you can see here, basically pushed all the way up against the extensions and that works pretty well for me. Now let's talk about shim location for a second. As you can see here, I've actually got nine templates per side on the Jam Master here. I like to have a lot of shim points. It makes the doors hang really well. So the way that I do this, you can see on the top here, I like my top shim points to be on the top side of the top hinge and the bottom side of the top hinge. Then we will go in between all of the hinges will have a shim point. So up here, here, and here. Now on the center two hinges, I like to go dead center. That works pretty well for me. So we'll have shim points dead center on the middle two hinges. At the bottom, we'll have a shim on the top side of the bottom hinge. So right in this area here, and then as far down as I can go with a Jam Master, you can only go so far down and be able to route it out. So that bottom shim will be about down in here. All right, so I will go ahead and prep these two openings with the Jam Master. Usually when I'm hanging doors with the Jam Master, I prep an entire floor of openings so that they're all pre-shimmed, and then I go through and set all the doors. And here we are all pre-shimmed. This opening here was pretty straightforward, no big deal. Um, this opening, however, the cripple studs were bowed in, so I bashed those over with the hammer, but that's another reason I love the Jam Masters because as soon as you put it in the opening, you start to get feedback and you get that picture of what you're gonna be dealing with. So as soon as I set it in the opening, I could tell I wasn't going to have very much space. So uh, ended up bashing those over. So now the door should pop right in there, no problems. Now I'm in the upstairs and this area is getting carpet. So I'm gonna take two half inch shims and set them under here. And we'll actually set our jam down on that. The reason I do that is because it keeps the door up off the floor about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half is what you want so that it'll slide right over the carpet and I don't have to cut it down then. Just saves labor versus setting them right down on the floor and then having to cut down every single door slab. So manhandling these big boys can be a little fun, but uh, first thing we do, tilt it over carefully, kind of use your leg to stabilize it. We'll knock off this brace that is on the bottom that they use uh, for transit. So that's knocked off. 
Now, a lot of times you'll have the little uh, door latch stopper here. I leave that in until I get it in the opening. So, there we go. So at this point, I've got the door loosely pushed in the opening. This is where I'll take my hammer claw, pop that bad boy out. I try and get the four corners somewhat close to being flush with the drywall. If you're gonna be a trim guy, you need to be able to abuse things without causing permanent damage. So that's why I use a rubber mallet because especially when hanging doors, I bang on things a lot. One of the nice things about using the GM Master and pre-shimming is once you just kind of put the door in the opening, friction kind of just holds it there. But this is a really good trick that will make your life a whole lot easier. Just take a scrap block of plywood so it won't split or anything. But then I like to come up here and screw it. Now what this piece of plywood does, I'm obviously I'm on the hinge side of the door and I need to start tacking it in place, but I can't do that because I don't have access to the jam because the door is covering that. Now, a lot of guys, you know, you'd probably open the door up and then what's gonna happen? The whole weight of the door is gonna make it want to fall forward. The jam is gonna pop out of the opening and you're gonna be struggling. So don't struggle with using that block up there, all I'm doing, now I can just open the door and the jam is gonna stay exactly where it's at. This is a two eight, eight foot door, inch and three quarters, super heavy. I don't wanna try and jack with that, trying to push that around. So work smarter, not harder, use a block up there. It'll hold it in place nice and flush. Whenever you're hanging doors, you're always gonna be making compensations for the framing being out of plumb. So the question is, do you want to make that compensation up at the top corners or down at the bottom? You want your top corners to be as close to flush with the drywall as possible. I don't wanna be offsetting the jam up here unless I absolutely have to because I have a really bad framing situation. If this is flush with the drywall in the top corners, it's gonna make your miters for your casing um, just much better, much easier to install. So I like to start at the top and I will get both top corners aligned flush with the drywall and then I'll start working the bottom to try and get it where it needs to be. Now I have my four corners tacked in place there, there, and all the way at the bottom there and there. So there are two things I want to do next. Uh, one of them is I want to make sure that my latch side or my strike side jam is aligned at the mortise and that I've got a good margin up there. This is critical for me. I want my door hardware to work good and I've been burned on this too many times in the past. So I always pay attention to make sure that my mortises on the door and on the jam are in alignment here. It's pretty much perfect. So we got kind of lucky there. So now that we've aligned, made sure that that's in alignment, I will step outside here and we want to start assessing what we need to do to make our door close really well. Now this is actually really close to perfect already. So at this step, what we're trying to do is get the door to close evenly and tightly to the door stop all the way up. So we're assessing any issues that we have uh, with this opening. Now say for example, I would have a gap down at the bottom between the door stop and the door. That would mean I need to push this jam over that way or this jam this way or a combination of the two to try to get the door closing nicely. A lot of you guys know that I make a framing walkthrough on a lot of these custom homes that I trim and I walk it during framing stage before drywall with my level and I plumb all of these door jams and that makes setting doors so much easier if you have all of your openings really close to plumb before you start trimming, just makes everything a lot easier. In this case, you can see 
it made installing this door easy. You pop it in the opening and everything's already plumb, so it kind of just comes together without much struggle. Whenever you nail something, it still has room to move. So if you're just starting out setting doors, don't be afraid to tack something and then beat it around a little bit. So what I do with, with tacking this in place, yes, I have nails at the top and bottom, but um, so a little persuasion with the rubber end of my mallet and I can still move the jam around and that's the way I approach it. I don't want to put in so many nails that I can't move things around before I'm ready for it to be permanently attached. So at this stage, it was just tacking it in place. Now that I have checked that my latches, uh, my strike, my latch is in alignment and my door stop, my door is closing nicely to the door stop. Now I can move on to actually nailing this off. One thing to keep in mind, if you watch a good experienced in door installer, they're constantly going to be closing and opening the doors. You're constantly checking your margins. You're checking to make sure the door is still closing nice and tight to your doorstop. You're checking to make sure that your mortises are aligned here. Check, 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 and recheck. The reason is, we all get on cruise control and we miss things. I could have easily got going and realized, crap, I forgot to level this strike side of the jam and get it aligned. And then I've got a huge margin up top or something like that. That happens. So always be checking, rechecking, check, recheck. Don't assume, just keep your eye on everything as you continue to fasten things permanently. With really heavy doors, such as these eight foot tall doors, inch and three quarter thick, solid core, very heavy, or exterior doors, like an entry door, something like that, nails are not enough in my opinion. Um, whenever you set a door, if you really want it to stay exactly as it is for the long haul, you really need to use screws to fasten that jam side to the cripple studs and shims. One of the reasons, again, I use the Jam Master is because it creates a perfectly shimmed opening and there aren't going to be any spaces, any gaps. The shim is gonna be perfectly tight to the cripple stud and the jam is gonna be perfectly tight to the shim. So then if you lock those three things together with a screw, it's gonna stay that way always. One of the biggest mistakes people make when setting doors is they set it with the mindset that it only matters how it looks right now. But you can have gaps in between your jam and your shim, and it might look okay now, it might look okay uh, through the duration of trimming the house. But what's gonna happen, if there's a gap between your jam and your shim, that thing is gonna settle over time and it's gonna throw off your margins and your door might start rubbing, it's not gonna swing the same, you're gonna have issues. So one of the things that a screw does is not only does it lock everything together, but if you have any minute amount of space between your shim and your cripple stud or your jam and your shim, it's gonna draw it together so that you can see the complete picture of what's going on while you're setting the door. So whenever I'm setting doors this heavy, I always put screws behind the hinges, not through the hinges because the painters can take those screws out and screw it up. I want to put screws behind the hinges and know that they are going to stay there. Nobody's going to jack with them. So we'll go ahead uh, with a regular drill, pop these screws out carefully. We don't want to strip them or anything like that. Now, sometimes you'll be trying to get the hinge leaf out and this is where you can either use a pry bar or a hammer. You just wanna insert it between the door and the jam, apply a little bit of pressure, and that will relieve the tension so that you can get that hinge leaf out. Same applies for whenever you're trying to get the hinge leaf back in place. Use a pry bar or a hammer in between there, and you can move that around and get that adjustment so that you can get that popped back into the mortise easily.
So I've got my exterior screws. I use a Phillips head screw. That way it matches the screws that I'm taking out and I don't have to switch drill bits. And I want to put the screw where I know my shim is at behind the jam. Okay, so just get that nice and snug, nice and tight. And that is all we need. I like to go ahead and install these screws behind the top three hinges, but sometimes I leave the bottom hinge and then I'll take a look at the door and I'll show you why I do that in a second. It's important to understand whenever you're setting doors to know which way the pull and the push is and where those forces are happening on the door. Now, you remember I put two shim locations at the top and bottom of this top hinge. The reason for that is the top hinge is very, very crucial as well as the bottom hinge. The reason for that is all of the weight of the door is pulling this way. So if you're not secured up there very well with either nails or preferably a screw or screws, that door can start to pull away over time. So it's very important to have that top hinge area shimmed correctly and fastened correctly. Now a big mistake that a lot of guys make happens down at the bottom hinge. You're setting the door and you're going to town and you think you're a speed demon, but if you're leaving gaps between the jam and the shim, or your shims are not quite correct and there's gappage in there, what's gonna happen is over time, the weight of that door is gonna push down at this bottom hinge and it's gonna cause it to come in which in turn is going to cause the top corner of your door to drop. And that's one of the reasons you see margins start to look like crap after homeowners live in their house for a while and, um, and the doors settle a little bit. So another reason to put a screw behind that bottom hinge is it's gonna pull any of that space in and eliminate that space and you're going to see a clear picture of of your margins at the time that you're hanging the door i hope that makes sense so if you're if you're pulling it over and taking the slop out now you're going to be able to get your margins perfect whereas if you've got a gap in there and you don't address it and you make your margins perfect on this strike side now What's going to happen is in the future, it's going to settle and then the margins are going to be bad or you could end up with the top corner of the door rubbing. Okay, next important thing to understand, hinge barrel slop. You can see here, I've got an M-Tech hinge, supposedly high-end hinges. These are not ball bearing, but listen. You hear all that wiggle that's happening? The reason for that is because the, the hinge pin is not perfectly tight inside all of these barrels. There's a margin in there that, that gives that rattle. Well, that actually means something whenever you're hanging a door because if you have the top side of the door pulling away and the bottom side of the door pushing in, if you have margin in your hinge barrel, what's that mean? That means that on the, the, the hinge side of your door, your margin is gonna be bigger at the top because the hinge is pulling out and it's going to be smaller at the bottom because it's pushing in. That is the effect that hinge barrel slop has on your jam, on your hinge side margins. Now this door actually isn't too bad. There is some gap in here. Um, it's actually worse a lot of times on six foot eight doors where you only have uh, three hinges. You can actually end up with uh, the margins being a lot worse. I nailed this off a little bit too much already. It's not wanting to slide back in there very well because I nailed it already. But there, I'll just push that playing card in there and it opened up this gap down here a little bit and then it actually helps the margin up at the top as well. 
Adding the playing card down here is not something that you have to do. It's just something that I wanted to show you. If you're finding that you're struggling with this being tight down here in a big gap up there at, at the top, that's something that you can do to help that. Also, if you are hanging doors that don't have the door slab beveled on the hinge side, you can end up with the door pinching up against the jam down here, which can cause it to want to spring open and different things like that. So sometimes adding those playing cards right there can alleviate that problem enough that you don't have that issue either. At this stage, we're basically done hanging the door. There's one more problem that I almost always encounter and that is the very top of the door. I don't feel like all of the door manufacturers that I hang set doors from uh, leave enough of a margin up here at the top. I think they need to make their head jam about a 30 second or a strong 30 second wider, but I'm never quite happy with the space that I have up at that top corner. So usually I have to go up there and pound that over even though I might like what my margin looks like here on this side, uh, it just doesn't ever seem to be quite enough up here at this top corner for me. So a lot of times I pound it with a block of wood and hammer and break that connection apart just a little bit to get me that extra 30 second that I want. So up at this top corner, I took a block of wood, hammered the jam a little bit, that broke open that joint just a little bit to give me that 30 second of an inch that I wanted. A 30 second doesn't sound like much, but whenever you're talking door margins, uh, it just makes a big difference having it correct versus having it too narrow up at the top. Also, the last place that you want to have a door margin uh, too narrow is up at the very top because over time, the hinge barrels on these also wear out and the tendency is for this door to want to keep falling this way and then that's where you can end up with the door rubbing up here. So you always wanna make sure that you have at least your eighth inch margin up here. So speaking of margins, there's a handy little tool and this is called a stepped pipe wedge gauge thingamajigger and it's nice for checking door margins if you want to see where you're at. Now I like to have mine on an eight foot door like this between an eighth inch and five thirty seconds. So I'm trying to get this to show up and focus but it's being kind of difficult but you can see uh, this is a stepped gauge. You can see how it steps up right here and it goes from 3 32nd, 8th, 5 32nd, 3 16 and then quarter inch. So this thing is really handy for a lot of things. I use it for a lot of different random tasks. I've actually had it in my tool belt for probably at least a year and I just keep it on me all the time because it comes in so handy. But you can use this to check your door margins. Um, there, I'm just a strong 8th not quite 5 30 seconds, not quite 5 30 seconds, and an eighth up there. So that's where, for me, that's where you wanna be. The other thing you have to remember is I'm in Indiana, in the Midwest of the United States, and it is spring right now. This is the most dangerous time to be setting doors. I am in a conditioned house but we're gonna be having the humidity season coming on. I just looked at the weather and next week we're gonna have highs of 98 degrees for a couple days. That is gonna increase the humidity, increase the amount of moisture the air will hold. And if you don't have a conditioned space, your door is gonna blow up, it's going to expand. And what were eighth inch margins today can be 16th tomorrow or even less than that. I have seen disasters. Now I don't have to worry about it too much because this house is a well-conditioned house. We've got the thermostat set at about 66, 68 degrees and we're keeping humidity under control. But keep in mind, if you're working for builders who are not controlling the, the climate in their houses and you set doors in uh, March or April or May, 
and your margins are good at an eighth of an inch and then comes the summer humidity everything in that entire house is going to blow up and your doors might not even close anymore so don't let your margins be too narrow i don't like margins down at a sixteenth of an inch that's just not good enough too many things can go wrong with that uh, i find between an eighth and five thirty second is ideal so guys youtubing takes makes things that should take not very long take a long time and it's friday and it's 4 45 and i'm ready to go home so i'm not going to video this next door i'm just going to slap that baby in but this is how you set a door well good shimming good attachment with screws careful attention to your strike mortise alignments careful attention to your margins and uh, just you know making sure that it's closing up against the door stop properly and one of the most satisfying things in trim carpentry is a well hung good swinging door closes you can see that it stays perfectly closed it's not springing open or anything like that so that is what we want i hope this video has been helpful i hope you've learned something um yeah there's a we could talk for hours about door setting but uh just wanted to show you the process of setting an eight foot door i've had a lot of requests for door setting videos so hopefully this is a start if you have more questions let me know in the comments and i'll try to do more videos in the future about door setting